it is time for the Sunday class, and this is a very special edition. Why is it special? <laughs> is that what you were asking? Oh, He's Miss Lee. Me oh. Oh, no. He's kind of half engaged here. Uh, it's special because this is one year we've been doing this. Amazing, this week. isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing, and, and it really is a testimony of what you were just telling me, because we're sitting here with our dog, Blue, and he may disrupt this. We're kind of worried about him. He's uh, not doing well. He's old, but we were just reminiscing about how Lee got him, because as missionaries, you never have much money, so what we did, Lee did, is she saved her nickels and dimes, literally. Little pennies, too. Where did you put them? I had a great big jar, and I kept them in this jar. Okay, so every day... And then day, I had to multiply the jars. Every day we'd go out, and she'd chip away at saving money, because our big dog, Quincy, had died. Mm -hmm. So it took her two years. Yep, about two years. And then we found Blue in Louisiana, and his New name Orleans. was New Orleans. His Lu name is Louisiana Bayou Blue Boo. Yep. And, and he's now getting old. We piece of one of our last, actually, he is our last zoo animal right. that we had in our drop by zoo. Yep. And he's uh, he's getting old. He's got some tumors and he's got some pain. We think, or he's going just insane. Uh, and <laughs> so now he's it. sitting on top of Miss Lee as we do this show, which is the one year anniversary of our. Uh, uh, what's the name of the show? <laughs> Sunday class. Our I, Sunday class. I'm so. Screwed up. I can't even think of the name of the class. Our Sunday, Our Sunday class. Because I'm working on a whole lot of different things and I can't remember them, which what the titles are sometimes because I get lost in what I'm doing. But uh, we'll be adding more to our Sunday class after the first of the year. Some real exciting things that we hope to add. But today we got a really long lesson. So we better get and, into it. And really, I wanted to lead into this because it's all about faith. And if you have faith as a mustard seed, and in a sense, that's what Lee had. She had faith as a penny. She'd just take <laughs> her pennies and just keep chipping away at the cost of a poodle, which a standard poodle at that time was about $400 and up. I got a discount. But she got a great it. deal. Yeah. I mean, besides the God, the Lord, and we really got this awesome meal out of it because yeah. we got to know the, the people. people <laughs> I think they spent $200 on that meal. So, uh, you know, I had these boiled shrimp in New Orleans and just had a fun night. And it was so funny when I them. took all this change into the bank, I went in with boxes and bags of change. Yes. And the bank people thought I was crazy until I told them, look, I've been saving up my change to buy a standard poodle. And they were like, wow. They were just kind of in awe. That yeah. And that's that. why, you know, she had faith for that two years that she could do this. And that's what this lesson is all about. So where are we reading, Lee? We are reading in... Let me focus here a minute. I'm not seeing what this... I actually cannot read that first. I think it's Matthew. Can you read that little thing? Yeah, it's messed up, but it is Matthew. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's not just my No, it's not your eyes. eyes. Yeah. Okay, it's Matthew 17, 14 through 21, Mark 9, 14 through 29, and Luke 9, 37 through... Through and one of the new things we hope to do next year is we're gonna we have some technology that allows us to take uh, to scan the book because it's hard to get this book. So we're gonna just scan the lesson, the verses, and let you have it in the. It'll be in the newsletter, so that'll be exciting to have there, so you can read and study yourself. Okay, are we ready to begin reading? Yeah. All right, here we go. Now it came to pass the next day after their descent from the mountain. That where he came to the now the descent with the mountain is where they had this great experience mm -hmm. of the Father revealing Himself, Jesus glowing, Moses and Elijah, all this amazing stuff. God spoke to them. It was an amazing. It event. was. But now he contrasts that with wait a minute. We're going to learn about not having faith because here they they saw this did the experience and this is why. Did the experience give them great faith? And Jesus is going to deal with that here. Okay, so they came down the mountain. That when he came to the disciples, he saw a great crowd around them and some scribes disputing with them. Now, and that's very interesting. 
because the scribes were like the educated elite. Scholars, would they be like? That would be, they were the people that would translate, take the Bible and inscribe it onto skins. And at that time, the skins would wear out, so they had to do it again. And they were very detailed people because if they didn't, if they made any mistake, they couldn't fix it. They had to burn the skin and start again. If this is the Old Testament, they were... Yeah, they were they working with the Old Testament. Right. And so they were pretty um, informed and literate. Yes. And yeah. they were, the and, they were and, part of the educated And actually, class many people, people. Say, will say, well, there's not many copies of the Old Testament out there. And that's... See, that proves... They will say that proves the Old Testament wasn't around very much okay yeah. the no 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 if you understand how it was transcribed it had to be perfect you didn't have messed up copies you only had the perfect ones that were preserved and the result was there weren't very many copies so we would expect there wouldn't be very and they many didn't have whiteout the then either they or didn't computers. have whiteout or they didn't have delete <laughs> on a computer I mean, when we think of the technology we have, I know it. and we, that we get discouraged. We used to be excited to have whiteout, so we didn't have to uh, retype a whole page. We used page. to be excited to have a typewriter Yeah. when we first started. We didn't have computers when mm -hmm. we first started doing our newsletters. And, stuff. And, and actually, if you were doing something legal or like tax papers or something like that, you did have to do the whole page over yeah. again because the whiteout yeah. didn't That's work. That's right. And I, I remember when we got a Selectric typewriter to do our newsletters with. That was so nice. Because it had some memory. Oh, electric, yeah. It was called a selector. Yes, electric. It was IBM. Mm -hmm. And it was allowed a little bit of memory, and you could change the fonts, little balls. Mm. And that, now, I, I just go online, and I got, it's, I'm overwhelmed with hundreds of fonts. So here we are in the 21st century with all this resources to do these amazing things. And we aren't doing any, that's one of the reasons we are able to do even greater than they were able to do, because the technology has increased it so much. Okay, so the scribes, I guess, were disputing with the disciples in the crowd. Well, the, 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 the point is the scribes are very detailed, so the scribes are always arguing. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to realize when you deal with intellectuals. They like to argue. They're scribes. They're like the scribes. They want to argue about the details, and uh, the common man doesn't worry about the details. So he you worries say about I'm a whole... scribe because oh, I really like the details. Lee I like the details. She would be a scribe if she was a man. <laughs> uh, she can be a scribe if she's a woman. Uh -uh. I don't think at that time. Probably but not. She had. She she is a scribe. I type. focus on the details. Yeah, she focuses on. And you know what? It drives me crazy, but it's my blessing because I don't care. I had a friend the other day said. You don't even pay attention to all the stuff around you. I said, no, I just focus on what I'm doing and get it done. And the details fill in behind me. And, and Lee Lee goes nuts because you the details, the details, the details. And she's part of the details that fill in behind me. Yeah. The Lord has given her to me as this wonderful blessing to fill in the details behind me. Now and she doesn't now think it's a now blessing. He's trying to... <laughs> Kiss up to me. No, All right, that's let's keep true. going. Let's keep going. You want me to go through why, how the Lord? No, 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 no. no, no we've no, done no. that. We know that. Okay. We, we're not going to get through this lesson. No. Okay. And immediately all the people, greatly amazed at seeing him, ran up to him and welcomed him. Now, they weren't up on the mountain. They were just amazed. Yeah, they were just he, down here. And he'd done these miracles and he'd made bread. And, and the he disciples did, and, and the they, crowd he, and his, the scribes his, are arguing. His about. reputation was growing so that he was... He was now able to, they, they were beginning to say, well, if we hang out with him, we'll get a free meal. If we hang out with him, man, it's cool. Fish and bread. We'll, we'll, we won't be sick anymore if we hang out with him. See, they were focusing on the material stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why the crowds were growing. And that doesn't mean as Christians we don't deal with the material stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we work. We make money or we make grow tomatoes, you know, there's two ways to do it. That's why there's outreach programs to feed And those people. are the material are things that are important to have, and Jesus Jesus gave those, but he didn't focus on them. Mm -hmm. His focus was on the eternal stuff, which is invisible. Okay, and he asked the scribe, what are you questioning with them? Now, here's the interesting. He came in defense of all these people that were kind of with him. Yeah. And so he stepped forward. Jesus stepped forward. And that's why many times Christian leaders need to do that. And mm -hmm. this is a great example to Christian leaders. 
most Christian leaders lead from behind. They say, well, you go out there and, and come to me and I'll tell you the answers. Yeah. No, Jesus stepped in front and he took on the scribes directly. He didn't let everybody else do it. He didn't send, he didn't send people, and I've had this happen to me, where the preacher sent someone to me because he didn't like the things I was saying, which were biblical. But the preacher was saying things that are unbiblical. Uh, he sent people to me to get to 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 fix me because he didn't want to fix because you. he didn't want to fix me he yeah. he didn't want to be in the middle of the scrape right. well the whole point that isn't how Jesus did it right okay and behold a man in answer came up to him from the crowd and falling on his knees to him cried out saying teacher I beseech you look upon my son have mercy on my son for he is my only child. I brought my son to you, Lord, because he is an epileptic and suffers grievously from a, a I don't know what this word is. It's a messed up word, too. I can't read oh, it. The printing's messed up. Yeah. A dumb spirit. A dumb spirit. So this disease was not a, just a physical disease. It was also caused by a spirit. A spirit. They, uh, an I don't know how they did that, but they did. Uh, well, you know, you kind of know when people are demon-possessed. It's... it's kind of obvious oh well it goes on to explain this would be this would be obvious yeah and whenever it seizes him lo he suddenly cries out and it throws him down in convulsions and he foams and grinds his teeth and only after a bruising struggle does it leave him so it's physically it, it, in today's fighting in today's world it would probably be viewed as epilepsy or some disease like that well he says and, he has epilepsy and suffers from this it says spirit. that? Yeah. Okay. It says, Lord, he is an epileptic oh, okay. and suffers grievously from a dumb spirit. Okay. So well, that's interesting. He, he probably has, one causes, one may cause the other too. Yeah. But what I wanted to get to was today they would give you psychotropic drugs to suppress the spirit. Yeah. That doesn't solve the problem. And that's why Jesus solved the problem. And the father continues and said, and he is wasting away. So I brought him to your disciples and begged them to cast it out. But they could not cure him. This is a strong demon. Now think about this. These are the disciples These are the that had just been on this great experience. Huh. They had seen God come down. They had seen the, 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 they'd seen Jesus glow. They'd seen Matthew, or I'm sorry, they, they'd seen Moses and Elijah. They'd heard God speak. What an experience! Yeah, and now they they didn't have any faith. And then didn't, didn't have so they these already experiences gone out and been healing on their own? The, yeah, I think disciples? so. But these experiences had not caused their faith to grow. Mm -hmm. They had, if anything, it may have weakened their faith because they kept thinking they should go back to the experience. And see, that is a problem. And I know I've emphasized this for three weeks now. That is a serious problem of the camp mentality. You go to camp, you have big experiences, you come back to church, and then you just keep kind of want to go back to camp. Mm -hmm. And if we could only go back to camp, it isn't camp that makes your faith grow. Right. It isn't the preacher that makes your faith grow. Jesus is illustrating how to do it. Then Jesus answered and said, "O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you?" Now. He says the problem is not that you aren't in the right location, you haven't had the right experiences, it's you. Your unbelief. Your You're unbelief. unbelieving and perverse. Sure. Now perverse is you focus on the material versus on the eternal, invisible character things. Uh, okay, how long shall I? Well, and, and a good example of the character things is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self control. These are the fruits of the Spirit, not getting high. Yeah. The fruits of the Spirit are character traits that God gives. And it's us. not like being with a group of people or not being with a group of people. That's right. It's not eating or not eating. It's not drinking right. or not drinking. It's it's none of those things. Now, you may fast as a way to, to focus your, mm -hmm. your spirit. Yeah. But it does. The fasting isn't the cause. It's the focusing of your spirit. And it and the fasting won't make you more spiritual or more holy. It, it focuses your spirit. It focuses I, your spirit. I think yeah. we need to be careful here. Fasting can be good. It isn't to deny it. Right. But it isn't 
uh, you know, I'll give you a good it's example. For a purpose. I met a guy that his wife was thought fasting was going to solve all of her spiritual problems. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? She died. She fasted too Starfish. much. Yes. Really? Yeah. Mm. Now, I guess she solved all her spiritual problems. She's yeah. gone. Yeah. You know, I don't know if she's, she's in heaven. heaven. I guess she is. Yeah. She said she believed in Jesus. Yeah. But see, that was focusing on the wrong yeah. thing. Yeah. The fact, and see, that's where we're to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Not to love fasting, not mm -hmm. to love our preacher, not to love our church, <coughs> not to love our witnessing, not to love our, our home, not to love our family, not to love your wife. These are all things that are good, and we love them. But first, we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Focus, focus, focus. Jesus is saying that. Okay, so Jesus says, bring your son <coughs> here to me. So they brought him to him, <coughs> Go ahead. and while he was yet approaching, when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Now here's what's interesting. Jesus, this the scriptures is revealing. Saw him. The, the spirit just saw him. The, but the scriptures is revealing this was both a physical and, and a, spiritual. a spirit problem, not yeah. a spiritual a spirit, spirit problem. problem right. uh, a spiritual is unbelief. A spirit problem is a being that possesses and lives within your flesh somehow. And we could. It's called a demon. Yeah, we could give you a lot of examples of dealing with that, but we won't do that. And now. some other time. We'll yeah. Do. Then Jesus asked his father, How long has this been with him? And he said, From childhood. And many times it has it cast him both into fire and into waters to destroy him. But if so he, that's one of the traits of a, that, that you're dealing with a demon. Those who hate God, the Bible says, love death. Demons love death. They want to kill and destroy. And that gives them power over that person. And they, they, they work. I was reading, reading about something very interesting this week about uh, the Christian view. It's a, it's a win-win. In other words, in business, in life, in marriage, uh, my wife and I are different, and really different, but it's a win-win, in the sense that she does the details and I do the broad, the broad perspective and the general stuff. And she gets frustrated with me and I get frustrated with her, but we know those are good that we work together, okay? And we overcome the, the disputes that we have at times. The thing is, that gives us power because we're more than twice as strong as we would be alone. Well, that is where uh, spirituality is that we have the character to overcome our selfishness of what we want to do. But go ahead. Okay, let's see. The demon again. wanted to throw him in the water and the fire. Okay, to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have pity on us and help us. And now, Jesus said saying, to him. If you can do yeah. anything, Jesus. If you can. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and with tears said, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Now this is really key because many times we don't have enough faith. You know, we, we just don't. And the reason for this, because faith, it, everybody li has faith, okay? But there's natural faith, and then there's supernatural faith. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very, I know the Bible doesn't specifically say this, but this guy is saying, well, I believe that he's sick. See, he believes he's got a demon. So you might say, well, he's spiritual. No, but he doesn't believe that God can do this. Now, that all things are possible. Yeah, he do this. That's yeah. what he's worried. He's not yeah. worried about all things. He's worried about this. Uh, well, Jesus, that's what Jesus said. said all Jesus says are all things are possible. Now, what's interesting is, it may be that you find tools. You know, for instance, if someone's sick, uh, we may find a way to overcome the sickness through antibiotics. That's a tool. medicine. That's yeah. medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but there's also demonic sickness. So we can't say all sickness is demonic. Right. This passage shows it's yeah. both. And we can't say no sickness is demonic. 
Yeah, because there's bacteria and germs That's that right. cause sickness. And see, it takes faith. It's interesting that only in Christian culture have these wonderful medical tools developed. Islamic culture, now, it doesn't mean any, somebody's an Islamist may not may be able to be a doctor, because they learn the techniques, and they're using the techniques. But the invention of these, for instance, it was Pasteur, who was a believer, who discovered that if you, you could sterilize bacteria, it's called pasteurization, and that life does not come from non-life. I think about that. Now, let me finish this statement before you come in here, though. Is life does not come from non-life, which is proven every time you open a peanut butter jar. Now, a peanut butter jar, I haven't heard that one before. You well, have to tell me that one. See, a peanut butter jar. <laughs> think about what the evolutionists say. You mean peanuts should pop out of a peanut butter jar? No, no. <laughs> what, what, what evolutionists say is life comes from non-life. It just began. We didn't begin any, it wasn't a God gave it. They don't deny that we're alive, but where'd life come from? Mm. Oh, it came from, from nature. But we're nature. You see, see, it had to come from death, from non-life. Well, that doesn't happen. The problem is we're alive. We're here. Okay, so the peanut had to die before it could become peanut butter. That's exactly right. Is that right? That's I'm just exactly. guessing. But what Pasteur right. discovered, see, at the time of Pasteur, they believe if you took a few old dirty rags and put them in a corner, yeah. they would spontaneously generate rats. Maggots and rats. Well, and all, yeah, because all, they didn't know there were germs on those dirty rags. That's right. They didn't know there were little eggs being laid by the flies, and they didn't know the germs, and they didn't know all that stuff. So he said if you seal and sterilize and kill all the life, then it won't decay. That's what peanut butter jars are all about. They're about peanuts that are processed, that are sterilized, and they won't decay. So every time you open a can of beans... Oh, well, so all our food that we buy from the grocery store. That, yeah. Think about this. This is amazing. And that's why sometimes there's recalls, because they didn't they do didn't it properly. Sterilize they didn't sterilize it properly. The that's right. The can, that's the right. Container, so so, so it's, a, it's a very important thing that you kill all the life. And that mm -hmm. means the bacteria, all the little microorganisms, and but see that is our whole economic system is based on a creationist philosophy of life that Pasteur discovered because you that think, changed the world. You think about it, if if you go to the evolutionary view that well it just happens and it evolves, well why do we even bother canning any food? Why don't we just, why don't we just it'll be okay. Look it'll at, kill us. Why but, don't we just have empty you know, cans and jars and hope that they evolve into food? It'll kill us, but that's natural. Yeah. See that that's the natural then when these people start yeah. talking about natural food, they're nuts. Mm. Natural will kill you. Yeah. Naturalism will kill you. People have been so um brainwashed you, and by the these words, not that's under, right. not and really so understood. It's very important we use words properly, but Every, just remember, every time you use a can of food and you eat that food that has been there sometimes for years, you would die if that food was left mm -hmm. out. Yeah. That's why you leave it out for a little bit, you put it in the fridge, that slows the process mm -hmm. of decay but once and bacteria. The air, once the bacteria yeah. then comes in from the outside, in other words, the rats and the flies show up and they start multiplying it isn't spontaneous generation mm -mm. which the evolutionist believes in spontaneous generation you realize that is the basic law of nature is the first law of biogenesis spontaneous generation doesn't happen mm -hmm. that's by all biology is based on that but evolution is based on that too the spontaneous generation does happen and that is one of the reasons I'm a creationist nothing out of nothing is not so now we have a dual substance. Or, we have, I mean something. We do have thing. nature. See, we're seeing this. We do have a natural disease, but we do have a spiritual problem, spirits, and a spiritual problem. So that's why life is a little more complicated than the naturalist want to believe it is. Mm -hmm. So well, should we continue? Yeah. Okay, I'm, so Jesus, time. seeing that a multitude was gathering on the run rebuked the foul spirit saying to it you dumb and deaf spirit i command you come out of him and enter 
not into him again. Then the demon, shrieking out and convulsing him sorely, came out of him. And he became as if dead, so that many said that he was dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and began to lift him up, and he arose. And he gave him back again to his father. So the lad was restored from that moment, and they all marveled at the majesty of God. Well, you know, it appears as though, no, we're going to finish, but what what here you have, and because we I've dealt with demons a little bit, and, you know, this was a dumb demon. Jesus used the word dumb. It didn't talk dumb. It shrieked. Oh, you mean, and dumb in that you cannot speak. It couldn't speak. Like, it didn't have language. Okay. okay. And what's interesting here is if you go to these these haunted houses, yeah, they all shriek. They shriek. It's like, yeah. and the reason is because the people have seen these dumb spirits and they've made images and copied and show. There are certain spirits that don't speak. Yeah. But they can can control you. Mm -hmm. And apparently, this spirit had such control over his will and his soul. Not his his spirit had been kind of put aside, mm -hmm. invisible, and had taken him over so much that when the spirit let go, the kid couldn't even take back control. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to actually touch him and heal that in a supernatural way for that to So take that's place. why he picked him up. Well, I, I, that's my hand. theory. Yeah. I, I don't took know. him by the hand. Having and experience in this up. area, that's why he touched him and took mm -hmm. him by the hand and helped him up. And that's recuperation. Now, he recuperated pretty quickly, yeah. but that's where some people take longer mm -hmm. to recuperate from some of these things. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus dealt with this dual substance here. Here in this, we see the dual substance. Very important. Secularism doesn't want dual substance. Mm -hmm. They only want matter is all there is, all there was, and all there ever will be. That is called naturalism. It is a religious belief that believes there is no God. Okay? All right. Okay, so Carl now... Carl Sagan, Huxley, uh -huh. uh, Christopher Hitchens, all through history has been a lot. names you recognize. Yeah. Now, upon his going into a house, his disciples came to Jesus privately and asked him, why could not we cast it out? Now, think about this. They had just been up on the mountain. Yeah. They had just seen Moses and Elijah. They saw that God was... And they had had the experience. Yeah. Did it give them power? Go ahead, read. Apparently not. <laughs> and Jesus said to them, Because you are lacking in faith. See, it had nothing to do with your experiences. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, with your faith. Are you willing to trust God? And faith is such a delicate thing. In, in marriage, we have to have faith. And I see sometimes I bruise Lee's faith in me. Do I ever do that? Probably. Yeah, I, I do it a lot. Because I, I tend to be focused and directional. And if you get in the way, that's the t my temperament, I'll bruise you. It's just natural. Now, that doesn't mean I haven't overcome that a lot. And I have to be very conscious of that and, and be careful. Because Lee doesn't have very... She's been bruised a lot, probably in her childhood and in her youth. And I just see how she was raised with alcoholics, and that really bruised her. And so trust is harder for her. Mm -hmm. So I see that many times I can bruise her, so I have to really be careful at not bruising her. And that's in relation, that's a relation, that's wisdom is to know what time it is. So I have learned to slowly kind of bring her along in faith. And that's why actually this whole thing we're doing here was a result of that. Because when I would try to tell her what to do, what will you say when I try to tell oh, her? Oh, usually I just say no. No, you don't just say no. What do I do? You say, I don't want you preaching at me. <laughs> well, you do that. <laughs> see? Yeah. See? And I say, don't be preaching at I me. See, and that, that's the thing. My, 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 one of my good friends, I won't mention his name because he hadn't given me permission. He has the same problem with his wife. And he, she'll say, don't you preach at me. You know, you're no better than I am. See, so you don't preach at me. You're no better than I am. Like, so I can learn. You can still learn that the point is, is personality has a lot to do with this. And faith is a very delicate muscle. 
that is an invisible muscle. Just like if you go exercise at the gym, your muscles build up. Right now, my back is weak because I've been doing a lot of sitting and riding, and I've got to get going, and I'm praying for an electric bike because that helps me exercise, and because as I get older, I can't walk as well as I used to. But the thing is, uh, by exercising my muscles, it strengthens me. But it's the same with faith. By exercising your faith, and one of the key things in exercising your faith is witnessing. You have, if you believe, you speak. And most of us have a fear of speaking to people about Jesus in any way. And you know what? That doesn't mean you go out and you say, you're a sinner, you need to repent, you need to cut Jesus. <coughs> well, Lee got choked up on that one. <coughs> Well, see, the Lord will show uh, you to teach, preach at people. You're preaching. Mm. <laughs> that means talking to your neighbor when you find them almost in tears in the street because of something that happened to them. Yeah. It means. Well, it also means talking them. to them that the Lord is the answer. That's right. See, it isn't. It's like today uh, we had Lee got to talk to one of our friends here that's kind of a nominal Christian, and he's been kind of upset about something that he disagreed with us on, that he's wrong about, but he disagrees. So he's been upset, and he's been avoiding us. So Lee says, well, I think today he decided it's time for him to come back and Talk start talking to us again. And Lee was Lee knew that was going to happen, because that's yep. what he does. He, yeah. he comes, it's, and he gets mad. It's in his life pattern. And see, faith <laughs> is that you continue to believe and overcome and help people. Uh, but that has to grow, and that doesn't happen overnight. And we wound up talking about the world, the flesh, and the devil. This just, is the guy you know, that you were talking to. Yeah, the guy you didn't just to. talk to him about the surface things because <clears throat> he got mad at us about the uh, the details yeah. later. But you were able to start at the basics and work out again. That is using your faith, but that isn't that isn't natural, mm -hmm. and that has to grow, mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus is talking about here. Okay, so, uh, he charged the deaf and dumb spirit to come out of him. Then the demon shrieking came out, and he became as if dead. I'm trying to find myself. Jesus took him by the hand. Okay, so the lad, and, and he stood up. So the lad was restored. No, I'm, I'm back too far Yeah, now. you're way, too far you're back. way. We're I talking to the disciples here. Okay. Why could we not cast him out? That's and right. Jesus said to them, because you are lacking in faith. Now, I want to apologize for Lee. As her eyesight is getting worse, she's having a hard time holding reading. So, and we can change the light. We're working on this because her, her macular holes are causing trouble. So pray for us on that. And older because, bad vision. And we're looking at getting some technology that will blow up the, the thing so she can read it better. But these are things, as you get older, you have to overcome. You could, She could quit. You say, oh, I, it's too hard to read. I it's too hard. I give up. Uh, we found some technology that next year we're going to blow this up so she can see it as big as her computer screen. For verily I say to you, if you have faith as large as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from <coughs> here Excuse to me. yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And that's one reason I, I didn't want you to go too far in that fasting thing. Fasting is a good thing because it concentrates your soul on eternal stuff, the invisible. Mm -hmm. But it isn't the purpose. Yeah, well, I agree that yeah, fasting... I knew, it. but the way you had said it, it a was place. a little bit critical of fasting. I think and the thing that I'm, bothers me is when people... Don't become let you know that okay. they're fasting well, because they're so spiritual. And that is exactly what other place in the Bible says don't do. Yeah. You don't go tell everybody you're fasting because right. that doesn't help. Yeah. That isn't a solving the problem. That's pumping yourself up. Yeah. Fasting is not something you talk about. Two, you may do it. Let me two two real quick examples. I know a man that, that does fast a lot. But he, you would never know it. He would never tell you. Yeah. And, you know, maybe something would happen and he'd say, you'd ask, offer him a drink or some kind of food. He'd just say, no, thank, no you. thank you. And then I find out later he was fasting. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's the other type of person that you say, would you know, you like a cup of coffee. Oh, no, I can't. I'm fasting. Well, and see, that there's is, a it's that. the same thing with prayer. 
we don't pray so others can see. We're not trying to impress people with our spirituality. Right. We're trying to know God. Right. And that is that is where God wants us to know him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, he wants and, us to talk to him. And, but we can't get ourselves in the way. Yeah. And that's where if you put the fasting first, you're in the way. Yeah. If you put the prayer first, you're in the way. If you put your giving first, it's, well, God bless me because I give. No, he doesn't. He bless you because he's gracious. You know, that's it. Yeah. And, does, and because he's gracious, I give. See, it's getting the order wrong that screws things up. Yeah. Well, God bless me because I have a good wife. No, he blessed you because he's gracious and gave you a good wife. Yeah. See, the whole point is we have to keep the order proper. And that's why the great question that was asked to Jesus was, what's the most important? That is so key. The Pharisees weren't wrong to ask him that. But he answered it is, he answered that clearly. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two. It's God first, neighbor second. That brings life together. And you take that out into the world to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and rule it and bring healing to even the environment around you. That's what we do as creationists. Not, we're not evolutionists. We're not environmentalists. We're creationist biblicists. This has been a great class. It has. It's we, always fun to study this. It's always so interesting and and everything to study about Jesus and what he said. So we will be doing more. You'll be getting more, but it's been really wonderful, and I guess I need to tell you goodbye. If you want to sign up or get others to sign up for our Sunday class.simplesite.com, there's a place to sign up there. And we'll have some new sign-ups after the first of the year. Be praying for all these things that we're working on.